Okay, so we're gonna start with this background video. Just take a look at it. Just a stable video of a basketball court. Now this video is going to be more like a breakdown than a tutorial because this is simulations. And if you know anything about simulations, <laughs> you have to test a lot of things and change a lot of values before you get what you want. So what is very important apart from the steps are the actual values. But then I would let you guys understand how I arrived at it. So as usual, I'll take a screenshot of this frame or whatever frame you want to work with. Go to FSpire and drop the screenshot. Then let's line it up. I think we can use minus Z and Y. Yeah, I like my front axis being my Y axis. Like I like going front and back this line to be my Y axis and this to be my X. That is how I'm just used to working. So let's line this up with this a straight Z axis. Also line this one straight and then take the Y and line it up. Okay, I think it'll be easier to line up the X. Yeah, let's do X, X and Z. So we'll line up this line here. You can also use this line. Is this a line? Yeah, this is a line. What does it look like? It's bending. Okay, let's use the one back here. Line up here to here. See, now we have our details here. These things have appeared, meaning we have been able to recreate the camera. So save this, call it VFX A3. Then go into a new blend file and file import. If you don't see FSpy, please watch the first video of this challenge. I talked about where you could find instructions to download it. Now open VFX A3 and G, Z to lift the camera up so you can see our grid on the floor. Nice. Shift A, mesh, plane. So add a plane. Let's drag this here and drag this in the Y axis. Scale it on the X and scale it on the Y. Perfect. Now, let's use a sphere. So this is going to be our basketball, basically. And <laughs> when I was working on this, I tried out so many different concepts before I landed on the one I did. I, I spent time, I spent at least like four or five hours just trying out different things before I finally landed on what I posted. So as usual, go to Cycles and uh, set this as a shadow catcher now go to your rendered view and uh, yeah lighten i think i used i think i used shadow plots yeah and go to render film transparent good now you have shadow of your ball on the floor let's make this brown i don't want to have to import the actual basketball so it's just make this brown yeah i need to explain some concepts to you like some simulation concepts on physics so the first thing is setting a rigid body on this object so before i duplicate it here let me set a rigid body on just one so this one here go to physics rigid body yep and change it from convex hull to sphere so it just knows that it's meant to operate as a sphere okay the next thing we do here is let's try from frame one let's drag this up and play it oh it <laughs> goes through the floor so click on the plane rigid body make this passive so let's do that again yeah it lands and uh, you can also change the Under surface response, you can also mess with friction and bounciness. So since it's a ball, let's make it bouncy. So yeah, you can do this for the plane too. Cool, cool, cool. Now when I take this up and I play, it's going to bounce. Yeah, like a, like a ball. Now what we want is, uh, let's bring this back down. Now what we want is to duplicate this. So hit seven to go from top view and duplicate this all over the floor you can use alt d so you don't need to change anything 
if you want to adjust things in the future or shift D whichever one works for you cool now we have a lot of balls <laughs> okay so the next thing we need to do is to add a force field so shift A force field force make sure it's on the same line and bring it up up here now if I set this force field strength to say 400 and I press play it's going to spread all the balls away I wanted to do the exact opposite so we are going to change it to minus 400 see what happens yep yeah you've basically you basically already done the entire video so the next thing I did was to take one of the balls duplicate it bring it up make it big let's make sure it's somewhere in the center of the force field and yeah let's press play oh yeah i made this to be to be non-reactive so i clicked animated so when you select the big ball click animated so it doesn't react so you can mess with it on your own so what i did i think i started from the bottom now we're here <laughs> okay 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 start from somewhere here yeah and then i animated it to go up so and to bring all this out at frame one location z insert single keyframe okay let's say at 60 you want it to go up so at 60 bring it up insert another keyframe then i did the same for rotation this time i just hit i so i get three axis rotation go to 60 and hit r twice r twice then just spin it however you like then hit I again here. Now it's gonna, yeah. I <laughs> have seen the effect come together, yeah? Exactly. Now you have to do a lot of experimentation. Something else I did, I was just playing, to be honest. This challenge, I just used it as an opportunity to play and just have fun. So the next thing I did was to add a vortex. So shift A, force field, vortex. I encourage you to spend some time just playing with these things by yourself and see exactly how they work. For example, if I set my vortex to, yeah, it's in the center. If I set my vortex strength to 40 and set my force field to zero, let's see what will happen. <laughs> okay, the ball starts spinning. But they are spinning on the ground. Let's take our force field, uh, nah, our vortex down. Let's see what will happen. Interesting. Let's increase it to like 400 too. Huh. Yeah, it starts spinning. I'm doing this weird stuff. Interesting. Now let's turn our force field back to minus 400. And also make sure your vortex is at 40 here. So let's see how that would look. See, so it's combining both of them. Okay. Okay, we want to take we want to take this force field and this vortex and bring them to where this ball is yeah same with the vortex somewhere here because the balls are following the force fields okay nice yeah so at this point what i did basically was to just duplicate this as many times as i could and just see what happened just spread it everywhere I know there is a more efficient way to do this with particle simulation and emitting all this, but hey, I just wanted to play with this and have fun. <laughs> Maybe in the next day of the challenge, I'll do something like that. So let's see how this looks. Nice. Yeah, we already have the effects. Splendid. Now, what I did was I added an animation, a keyframe to uh, the force field. So let's say at frame, let's play it out. At frame 80, let's add a keyframe to the strength. Hit I. Then move one frame to the right at 81 and change it to zero. And hit I again. You can either hit I or click this. Do the same for vortex. At 80, click this. 81, change it to zero and click this. Basically, you want to turn everything off at frame 80 so let's see how that looks yeah 
pretty much that is the entire effect <laughs> then what i also did at frame 80 was or say 60 click this ball at say 70 insert location keyframe and at 80 bring it up then at say 100 how long did it take for this thing to land let's see yeah at 100 let's bring it back down or we can just copy this one the original one so we get the exact position and paste it so let's see how that looks yeah that's the entire effect you can just set the end frame to 100 you can also go to the camera and make sure our background image is 100 percent and let's look at that in the rendered view looking nice see you already have the effect going so just take this and play with it play you need to play don't recreate this you need to play with these settings i saw some really awesome stuff when i was playing with it so you just have fun and do what you want to do so yeah that's pretty much it i'll see you in the next tutorial